It's always a pleasure being on your screen on another edition of Ladies Digest where issues in the world of women are discussed. Ladies Digest is proudly brought to you by AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. Today we have a special guest who will be speaking with us on a very, very serious topic which has been on the rise of recent and I think uh, we need to discuss and address it. After the introduction, we'll get to meet our guest and we get to know the topic we'll be discussing. Do stay tuned. I'm Joan Equia Iyoha. Miss Juanita Headley is a British-born attorney of Jamaican parents. She is a United Nations trained chef and an author on human trafficking and child sexual abuse. She is passionate about giving talks on human trafficking and child abuse. Her hobbies are reading crime fiction, baking, and playing board games. Her philosophy about life is, God gives us second chances. We too should extend a hand of grace and forgiveness. Her dream is to open safe houses in the Philippines for victims of sex trafficking and build bakeries around the world to hire the former homeless, the former prostitutes and ex-convicts. She thus uses 60% of profits raised from the sale of her books to enable those dreams to become a reality. In case you just joined us, this is the Ladies Digest and we have in our Miss, Miss Juanita Headley. We have a vice Zoom though and she's a UK based attorney and an expert in the topic we'll be discussing. And our topic for discussion today is sexual violence, which has become a very, very big um, issue in our society. It's becoming a societal being. And um, Ms. Juanita, I, I hope you are there. I'm here. Okay, welcome to Ladies Digest. It's nice having you once again. I know I met you sometime last year, and it, it's a priv privilege having you again. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome. So before we go into um, the discussion, I want to know, I know you, you, you travel a lot. I just want to know currently where you are, because I hear you're in Belgium, you're in Netherlands. Where are you right now? People often ask me that question because I travel so much every year. By the grace of God, I'm currently in the UK. I moved back here last November to begin paid work. I've been volunteering for around seven and a half years unpaid and I decided I think it's time for me to start to earn an income and despite the lockdown I must really thank the Lord because I do still work from home there are many people who have lost jobs even loved ones during this very difficult time but I thank God that I do have paid employment and I'm still able to work despite the current situation that we're going through right now Wow, that's good to know. Um, I'm happy to hear that. Um, we'll just go straight to um, the discussion. So we're looking at um, sexual violence um, becoming an, an issue in the society. Um, per, before I, I, I throw my first question to you, per the National Sex, Sexual Violence Research Center, I read the statistics from the, in the US, we say that sexual violence is is a complex um, societal issue that affects one in five women and one in 70 men in their lifetime. And I think that's quite an, an important topic to discuss with the statistics. I will want to know the term sexual assault. How would you describe this term that a lay person will, will understand and get a drift? Sexual assault can be defined as coercing or forcing another person to engage in sexual activity without consent or touching a person sexually with any part of your body or with the use of an object. The more simplistic way to explain the term sexual assault is sexual touching from one person or group of persons to another where consent has not been given. In other words, unwanted sexual touching. And then we'll come to rape. Rape, the term rape is, is very common. Um, we hear of rape often. And would, what would be the definition of rape? Is there a difference between sexual assault and rape? 
And if there is, can you help differentiate? Rape can be defined as penetration by a man with the use of his genitals, penetrating another man, or penetrating another female. For example, when a man penetrates a man, that could be his mouth or anus. And when it comes to rape of a female or woman, that would be the penetration from a man to the woman's private parts, her mouth or anus. That's true. So you mentioned in the definition for this sexual assault, you mentioned consent. There was a lot of mention of consent. What, what do you mean by consent when you say consent, without consent or with consent? Consent can be defined as an agreement to participate in sexual activity. But it's important to understand the term informed consent. Informed, you know what you are consenting to. And also, we have to understand that even if a person is engaging in sexual activity, they do not have to continue to engage. They have the legal right to withdraw their consent. For example, two people are engaging in sexual activity and one of those individuals decides they do not want to go any further, they can say no. And sometimes this creates difficulties when an individual will accuse another of rape because sexual activity took place and then they change their mind. But legally, a person can indeed withdraw their consent even if they had been engaging in sexual activity. Sure, sure, sure. So statistics has it here that um, women are more um, sexually abused or sexually assaulted and majority of them than men and majority of them do, don't get to report the case, the incidences. Would you, um, I would want to know why this, what are the reasons for they not reporting and rather staying with it and suffering? What I will say is quite often there are a lot of myths surrounding the topic of rape mm -hmm. and the fact that when it comes to the accusation of a male being raped, it is often disbelieved because men are deemed to be strong and can hold off any form of attack. We have to understand that rape is not gender specific. A male or female, a young or an old person can be raped and it is not about having strength. There are elderly people who rape another, who would rape a child. So please understand it is not about the level of strength that a person may indeed have. Sadly, one of the myths is that a person who is male will most likely be raped if they are homosexual or homosexuals have a tendency or a deviance to rape other males. This is really not the truth. At the end of the day, rape of males exists and not just in prisons and not perpetrated merely by homosexuals, but absolutely any person can indeed inflict the crime of rape to another, regardless of their sexual orientation. With women, often their reason for not disclosing a rape is because they feel a sense of blame, a sense of guilt or responsibility. In certain cultures and communities, if that female grows up in an environment where her virginity is seen as being something of great importance, having that stolen or taken away from her will mean in that community that she's less valued, that she's seen as secondhand goods. The sad reality is that we live in a day and age in a culture where men and women are seen as unequal. We may deceive ourselves that they are equal. This is not the case. When a man sleeps around, his friends will tell him that he's, he's great and that he's accomplished many things. When a woman does the same, she's often judged. And we do know that when a woman is a victim of rape or sexual assault, that she will experience a lot of blame, not just by herself, but by society. Questions will be asked as to what was she wearing? Why was she out there? Who was she with? As if to say, these factors go some way as to explain why she became a victim. I'm convinced that no matter what a female may do, no matter what a male may do, neither of them deserves to be the victim of rape or sexual assault. 
Yeah. Even if a woman was walking around with absolutely no clothing on, that does not give any person the right to assault or abuse her. Even if she has a signboard that says, I am naked, that signboard is not deemed as consent. It says, I am naked. It is not giving consent. Because as I said, it has to be informed. Understand that in a relationship, whether that's marriage or dating, rape may even occur. Because despite the fact that you're in a loving relationship or marriage, that does not mean to say you have lost consent. You have lost the ability to say no to your spouse or partner. And that is important to know. The sad reality is often in Christian circles, men believe that they are the head, as it says right in the Bible. But they often, not always, often treat their women, their wives, as though that woman is merely there for his sexual pleasures. The Bible says that when God created Adam and Eve, he took Eve from the side of Adam, not from the foot bottom and not from the spine. Therefore, my understanding is that we should be side by side, that we have equal rights. The sad reality is there are men who are Christian, men of other faiths and no faiths, who believe and are convinced that they are the head of the household. Biblically, that is correct. But that does not mean to say that that wife has no authority over her own body to decline sexual activity. And if the husband or partner pursues, that is indeed a crime and that is rape. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a, a crime and it's rape. And talking about the victims here, we, uh, let's talk about rape culture. And this is when um, the, the, the incidents occurs, we see that parents and the society more like slut shames the victim, either the male or the female, they rather slut shame the victim, try and put all the blame on the victim, asking questions like where was she, where was she there, why was she dressed that way, what was she doing there all alone, what was she looking for at that time, what was he looking for at that time, why did he go to his room, questions like that. And we see that they are categorically putting the blame in the victim. Why is this? Why is this um, rape culture rampant in our society? And I think in South Africa, it's, it's very rampant. Per my research, I saw that in South Africa, it's very, very serious. Why? Why? What, what is this rape culture about? I feel that it's because of people's knowledge. As the Bible says, people perish for lack of knowledge. The sad reality is often individuals who point the finger at the victim, they do not understand rape, that it is about power and control, it is not about sex. And they do not understand that the victim is innocent in all occasions. No matter the circumstance, no means no, and consent is indeed consent. When there's the absence of consent, this is a crime. Quite often people who make remarks blaming the victim, they themselves, do not have a full understanding of what it is like to be a victim. Now I say that, however, there are individuals who have been victims of some form of sexual crime and still point the finger and judge others. That I believe is because in their mindset, they believe that there are only certain type of women or girls who are innocent. If you dress a certain way, you'll be judged as leading on the guy. Even if a person has survived, and abuse themselves, they may still have this judgmental mindset that often society gives us that the young person or the woman is to blame. In Brussels, they actually have a museum where they have clothing of various rape victims. And this museum is to highlight and identify the fact that clothing does not lead to you being raped. And in fact, what is very interesting about this museum is that all the items of clothing that are there are not sexualized in any shape or form. Now we know that sometimes women are wearing sexualized clothing. It might make them look good. It might make them feel great. And sadly, they are exploited, raped or assaulted. Now in this museum, they have depicted items of clothing of women who were completely innocent. They did not lead on the guy, nor did their clothing. But it is important to point out that no matter what a person wears, that does not count as consent. And I feel instead of us judging the ignorance of others who point the finger at the victim, we need to instead educate them. At the end of the day, without knowledge, how can we expect any better from them? The sad reality 
is until a crime of sexual assault or rape lands on their doorsteps, they may never truly understand. Now, we would hate for that to happen, but we have an obligation to get them to understand the victim's story. We've got to be a voice for the voiceless. We've got to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be back. Four years ago, like most young people, I was clueless as to what I wanted to do and which institution would help me realize a great career. What better place to pursue this dream than Blue Cross College, with state-of-the-art lecture halls and experienced lecturers, as well as equipped computer labs, Blue Crest is indeed the right starting point. With certificate, diploma and degree programs in information technology, business administration, journalism, oil and gas, Blue Crest is the one-stop institute for everyone who is looking to have a great career. Enroll now. Visit www.bluecrest.edu.gh or call any of the numbers on the screen. Blue Crest College, education for life. In case you just joined us, this is still Ladies Digest and Ladies Digest is brought to you by AAU TV. Remember, you can join the conversation on our social media handles on Facebook and YouTube, Association of African Universities, and our Instagram handle at Ladies Digest. You can drop your comments and your questions and we sure we'll address them. Um, Johnita, before the break, we spoke, we, we touched on the rape culture and, and I just remembered this case which have actually informed the decision to to host this show where a lady this happened in nigeria a lady went to she's a nine university student a hundred level university student and with a lockdown and the university schools educational institutions have have been closed or have been on hold, she decide, decided to go to the church to read because she has the idea that upon resumption, the school, the authority will decide that they just start writing their exams. So she doesn't want to be caught on her ways and she decides to go read. And this isn't the first time she's reading. She's been reading in the church for over five years, so it's a normal thing. And she goes on that fateful day to read and and before the parents know they get a call and some SOS call that their daughter is in coma and I think she was in coma for some two to three days before she finally passed and it was it's 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 really a sorrowful thing but then you you check comments on social media and you see really bad comments like asking what she was doing in the church why would she be reading church a school in session that she's she should be reading what was she doing why wasn't she at home she wanted it she asked for it maybe she even enjoyed it before she died like some really appalling statements and i'm wondering uh, where has the society gone to, got into? Is this where we've got, in, got into? Where is humanity? And then I just say, say to myself, this is rape culture. The end of blaming the lady or the victim for happens. Would you have anything to say to that? I think it's really disappointing to hear instances of a person being brutalized and raped and then for such inappropriate comments to be made towards the victim. Now, my belief of this young girl is that she chose and sought out a church for the purpose of finding a place that will be quiet, a place that will be reverent, a place that should be able to focus on her education. It just sounds very sad and it breaks my heart to hear that comments are made that she should not have been in the church studying because she didn't have school. What's wrong with her having aspirations to excel academically? What's the problem with her deciding, do you know what? I want to use this opportunity to get really, really good at this subject, to have a greater knowledge and understanding of this subject. What is the problem with that? And even for remarks we made that she was asking for it, realistically speaking, any human being who understands that a church is a place of God, it's a holy sanctuary, it is a place for fellowship, for worship, and for teaching, Anyone who fully understands that 
would know that if they wanted to engage in sexual activity, the first place that they should go to would be a brothel or a street corner where they could purchase sex with a prostitute. Going to a church is one of the last places you would expect to find a person ready, willing, and available for sex. The fact of the matter is that the perpetrator has defiled the church and defiled the girl and taken her life. This is sad. And it's unfortunate that this is not going to be the last time we hear of an instance of a girl being violated. We know often of cases of abuse in Catholic churches. And the sad reality is that people believe too often that Catholic priests are pedophiles. I strongly believe that this is far from the truth. I believe instead that there are people who are pedophiles who are sometimes Catholic priests. I'll say that again. There are people who are pedophiles who are sometimes Catholic priests. Just because a person is a priest does not make them a pedophile. And in saying that, for all we know, some of these priests who do sexually abuse young boys may not do that in a church because they may actually understand that a church is a holy place. At the end of the day, crime is crime and we have to abide by the laws of the land and the laws of God. And I believe that justice exists, but I feel it's important for us to understand a person's behavior so that they can get the help and the support that they need. When a person violates another, rapes or sexual assaults, that is not about sex, it's about power and control. And there are women, there are prostitutes who have customers that they sometimes will see in a newspaper or hear about on the news because these men have gone out and raped a stranger. In other words, prostitution is simply training ground. I have never believed that prostitution was a job or sex work. I believe that it's paid rape and that these men are rapists. Because what do they do? They purchase a woman for sex, brutalize her quite often, engage in sexual activity that she has not consented to, and then a few weeks, months, or even days later, they go on to enact the very same thing to a woman on the street. And the sad reality is we even have rape robots where these men can enact being raped on a robot and then go on to perpetrate that to a completely innocent person on the street. We need to understand that when a person behaves a certain way, it is coming from somewhere. Instead of pointing the finger, judging and name calling, we need to do something. We need to educate our young boys. The whole saying boys will be boys is so inappropriate. At the end of the day, just because an individual has male DNA does not mean to say that they should sleep around, fornicate, be promiscuous, disrespect women, rape their girlfriend, wife or partner, of course not. When we say boys will be boys, we are making excuses for their behavior. Instead, we need to understand where is the behavior coming from? Is it something that they've learned, been exposed to, something they've experienced? There are individuals who sometimes go on to enact rape against another because they too have been violated. Now that does not make an excuse for their behavior, but as I've said, we can understand and we can get them the help. But I believe often, for people who perpetrate rape, that help is best served behind prison bars. Why do I say often? There are individuals who have committed rape and get a slap on the wrist and are not behind bars. And many of us are not okay with that, but we have to understand that in certain circumstances, it may be as a result of intoxication. As difficult as this is to say, sometimes it is a circumstantial crime. I'm not justifying it. But just as we have individuals who may see a wallet and steal it, there are individuals who commit offenses not because they are mass murderers, mass rapists, mass pedophiles, but it is the opportunity that presents itself. That person certainly needs help. And if prison is not going to avail them, then we need to do something about that. We have to educate the people around us. Educate the boys in your world and educate the girls. At the end of the day, rape, abuse, and exploitation our equal opportunity employers, they affect people all around the world, regardless of their ethnicity, age, gender, skin color. It's a sad reality, but that unfortunately is the truth. And those who do not understand what it is like to be a victim, 
instead of judging them, let's educate them, let them, let's let them have the opportunity to truly hear a voice's victim's voice, to truly hear what a victim has to say. Because often they're looking at a story from the newspaper that has sensationalized it. Often the opinions they have are not their own, it's simply the way they've been brought up, the things they've heard friends and family say. If that victim was somebody close to home, I'm quite convinced they would not feel that same way or make such inappropriate comments. But again, instead of judging, we need to educate. Let's speak for the victims. Let's be an advocate on their behalf so that the dynamics of the way people think, speak, and behave towards one another will change so we can have a safer society and a safer world. Oh. Thank you for that. Um, talking about the victims, um, we know that definitely being, rape being that um, more like a gruesome act, I'll say, it's, it definitely has effect on the victims, those who survive it. And a lot of them do survive it. It has the psychological effect, which is more like the post-traumatic stress disorder, emotional responses, and it also we have the physical effect, another effect, which like the unwanted pregnancy, the diseases and all. Would you, um, I want you to take us through from, yeah, looking at the, from the very young child who was abused by the uncle, the dad, the, the brother, the neighbor, the in-law, to the adult who was also abused by the boss, the whoever. Who, I want you to take us through the different effects, the aftermath of rape on the victim. What we have to understand when a child is abused at a very young age, they often develop ACEs, adverse childhood experience. Now, an ACE, for example, could be as the result of any form of abuse. And as a result of being subjected to this abuse, the child will develop spaces in the brain. Now, it does not mean to say that they have mental problems far from it, but there's often something different about them. And unfortunately, if they do not get the therapy, counseling, prayer, or healing that will restore their brain, they may often, but not always, often grow up with many of these dysfunctions even into adulthood. Now, when a small child has been a victim of abuse or sexual assault or even rape, they may have regressive behavior or suck in the thumb or even wetting the bed. Some of these children who abuse at a young age don't even know it. In fact, I've met survivors of childhood abuse who did not know they were abused. One of them had flashback. The other young girl was in a children's home and the court case document said she was sexually abused by her stepfather from one to six months old. The sad reality is when we think about such a young age and the fact she doesn't remember that, is that many of us may also have been a victim of some form of sexual abuse at a young age and we simply wouldn't know it. I indeed was a victim of sexual abuse from the ages of four to 10 by my mother's first husband. Many of the signs and identifiers that can be found in children, I had them throughout my childhood and even some of them into adulthood. Now with older children, they usually do not wet the bed, so the signs are indeed different. Maybe they have low self-esteem, insomnia. What about an eating disorder, obesity? Now it's important to understand if a person is obese, that does not mean they were a victim of abuse, rape or sexual assault. But sometimes as a result of what they've gone through, they eat because that is how they get back to control. What about a person who self-harms or has suicidal ideations? An individual who excessively baths, doesn't bath at all is uncomfortable around certain family members, around certain people. Because the sad reality is with sexual assault, rape and abuse, it is often by somebody that we know, not a stranger. What about somebody with STDs, who's promiscuous, a person who's pregnant? Now, when a young person is pregnant or a woman outside of marriage, instead of judging her, we should ask ourselves mentally, who is the father? Because when we judge, we have no idea that she was impregnated as a result of rape. Not every child who was born was born out of a consensual, loving, sexual relationship. There are many instances of children who walk around who are indeed the results 
of a parent being raped, of a parent being violated, and we need to understand that. At the end of the day, no matter what a person has been through, help is indeed available so they can have a healthy and whole life. What about a person with a lot of anger issues? Now let's say that there's a man who has tremendous anger problems that he takes out on his wife by brutalizing and beating her. Often our response is he should divorce her. If you're Christian, you'll say, pray about it. I believe that both of those responses may not necessarily be the correct solution. Instead of advising for this couple to divorce, for the lady's safety, I believe that instead you should recommend that they separate. Prayer is important, but we also have to have action too. Pray without works is dead. We need to have action. We seek God first, but we also have to use wisdom in the things that we do. Now, this man leaves his wife. If he divorces her and remarries, he will most likely do the same thing again. Because what has happened is his behavior and conduct of immense anger was actually the result of being sexually abused as a child. Now, not every man who beats his wife, that is his story, but we have to understand that with every person's behavior or conduct, it comes from somewhere. There is the root cause. We have to identify that root cause. With a man who's beating his wife, identify the issue so that he can get the help. If he has been abused as a child, he suffered trauma. And as a result of the trauma, he has anger issues and that anger is taken out upon his wife. Yeah. His wife is not to blame. She is never to blame. His actions are criminal. I completely concur. But as I said, when you can understand the problem, you can get him the help so he can have a healthy and whole marriage. Making him divorce her and then remarrying will not solve the issue. With all of us, we have certain dysfunctions in our lives. Some of them are kept behind closed doors, but with every dysfunction we have, it comes from somewhere. We need to uncover the root. When we can understand the foundation of why a person behaves the way they do, we can get them the help so that they can be healthy and whole. I am convinced that your past does not have to dictate your future. And as it says in the Bible, all things, not just some things, all things truly work together for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we wrap up, um, and I'll give you an opportunity to talk about your book. And we just want to um, know um, these disorders and all, just a brief one. What are some of the measures that can be taken to, to after the, this case of rape? What are some of the measures that we are talking about, therapy and all those measures can you just in brief uh, alight some of the measures that can be taken i feel the most important thing for a survivor of rape or sexual assault is for them to get therapy or counseling now it really depends on that person as to what sort of support will best work for them there are various different types of therapy but i feel that having a safe space to be able to deal with the trauma of what that person has been through is really crucial the important thing to note is that with therapy and counseling, often the results take time. And the sad reality is a lot of survivors who have been victims of sexual assault or abuse, they believe that there is a quick fix and that is not the reality. The reality is when a person has been victimized, often to deal with that trauma, they've got to go back to the past and it takes a very, very long time for them to be able to deal with that issue. I feel it's important for us to understand that because if not, then we will have the mistaken and the wrong assumption that a few sessions, a few hours of therapy is all that it takes. And this is not the case. Okay, um, thank you very much. So you wrote a book, um, C-Y-A-K-A-C-S. Can you keep it secret? Can you just give us a brief about its, its content? And yeah, a brief. Certainly, this is my book. Wow. Can You Keep a Secret, which I launched a year ago in Ghana. My book shares my own personal story of surviving childhood sexual abuse. It also provides people with signs and identifiers to be able to determine if somebody in their world has indeed been a victim of childhood sexual abuse. I also provide individuals with tips on how best to respond to disclosures of abuse, and more importantly, how to respond correctly to the question, can you keep a secret? The sad reality is when a child or young person or even an adult 
ask the question, can you keep a secret? We often respond, no, or it depends. I too received an it depends. And as a result of that, I kept my secret of being abused for many, many years. My book is titled, Can You Keep a Secret? Because I want to encourage people for you to protect and safeguard the children in your world, you need to respond yes to the question, can you keep a secret? When a person asks you that question, it is a cry for help. They're trying to tell you something. You need to respond yes with your mouth and it depends with your head. Once they've disclosed the secret, then you tell them something like this. I have to break your trust and call the police. I have to break your trust and call the authorities or the social worker. It's important you have that conversation. Do not call the accused. I heard you've been sexually abusing your stepdaughter or daughter. They will deny it and hide the evidence. Whenever somebody asks you that question, can you keep a secret? Respond yes with your mouth, hear the secret, then tell them, I have to break your trust and call the police and then take those next steps to protect them. Overcomplicating the question will not safeguard that child. I meet children and adults from around the world, males and females, young and old, who disclose to me for the very first time their secret. Why? I'm convinced they have tried to tell family members, but they got in it depends. We need to have the right response to that question. Respond yes to the question, can you keep a secret? Wow, thank you very much, Juanita, for in Headley for squeezing time to be with us for sticking with us in spite of the hitches we really want to thank you and we know that next time when we call on you you, you would honor our invitation and i know you are your advice on can you keep it secret and this saying yes has been accepted and has been taken by our viewers um yeah we really appreciate thank you very much for joining us thank you for having me and of course if anyone would like to get a copy of my book they can contact me via my website, changingcases.org, that's changing, C-A-S-E-S dot org, or my Facebook, Changing Cases. Again, my website, changingcases.org, changing, C-A-S-E-S dot org, or my Facebook, Changing Cases. She would even will put that on the screen so they can get um, the right spelling and the right letters. Thank you for sticking with us. This has been Ladies Digest and we touched on a very, very important topic, um, sexual, sexual abuse, sexual violence. Till I come your way next time, I'm Joan Equia Iohamin. Thanks to my production team, my producer and my cameraman. Many thanks to them. Still, I come your way next time. Do stay tuned. Thank you.